A southern Alberta town recently became the focus of national news when a rally against COVID mandates was held near the Coutts port of entry to the U.S.-Canada border. The rally quickly turned into a blockade, preventing traffic from coming and going. For many in the region, the blockade was a huge inconvenience. It also disrupted millions of dollars in federal economic trade. And the mayor of Coutts says it divided the people of his tiny village. It all came to an end, though, when RCMP arrested 13 people and confiscated a number of firearms near the rallies. Marco Van Hugenboss is one of the organizers and spokesperson for the Coots rally. He joins me from Fort McLeod, Alberta, to discuss what he believes are some misconceptions surrounding the rallies, why they were there, and what it stood for. Marco, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, obviously, a lot happened this past week. There were a number of arrests. As far as you know, did those who were arrested have anything to do with the rallies happening near Coots or the people that you knew? Um, with the information that's been released, uh, some of the pictures, uh, the charges, obviously, um, the firearms, et cetera, we're looking, we're looking into this a bit and, and some of the faces are familiar. Now, with, when I say familiar, there's, there's a lot of people that have come through Coots uh, in the 17, 18 days that we were there. Um, what role they played is, is, is zero to none. Uh, they weren't part of the uh, organizing team. Um, like I said, we, we didn't have the tools to vet people. So we're, we're really looking into who these people are, um, what their backgrounds are. But I do believe that the majority of the people arrested were individuals um, at the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay, why, why does your group feel it's necessary to look into who these people are? Isn't that like the police job? Or are you just more trying to make a statement that these people had nothing to do with us? That's like, when it comes to the violent element that the RCMP has said was within our group, we've obviously distanced ourselves from them right away. Uh, we've made that very clear from the beginning that we were there peacefully. And, you know, on Tuesday morning, we left peace, peacefully when this information surfaced. Uh, that was not a decision that was made lightly, but we felt it was the best decision. In regards to looking into these individuals, I'm not, not that we're looking into these individuals, we're looking into the circumstances of the arrests, the individuals involved, and things, I can't comment too much on things at the moment, but things aren't lining up 100%. Okay, uh, what do you mean by that exactly? For one example, and... Um, you know, this is Southern Alberta. This is, um, you know, Coots is a farming community. You know, everybody has firearms uh, used for purpose of hunting, recreation, etc. Uh, some of the firearms that were in on this property that the owner uh, disclosed are not even shown in the official picture that the RCMP has released. So that's one example of why why things don't add up. We're not sure what's going on, uh, but it, it's not making sense to, to the individuals on the ground. It's not making sense to our lawyers. It's not making sense to um, the, the homeowner. Okay, so there was a homeowner in the Coots area who was, had weapons confiscated? Is so so the, home, the home where the, yeah, so the, the, the home where the arrests were made, there was, RVs on site. Um, the people that were staying there were not known to the homeowner previously. Now, of the of the thirteen, the majority of these these youths, these these young adults, were were were, were known to individuals in the protest. We've talked to their parents, and they're 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 they're, they're essentially um, harmless lads and gals and girls from. McGrath and, and Raymond. And that's why we feel wrong place, wrong time. Uh, there's still a lot of questions that are unanswered, but the fact that the RCMP has released a picture of the weapons, the body armor, that doesn't include a firearm that was seized, doesn't make sense to us. Okay, and you're saying that some of the weapons in the photos are weapons that were not there? I'm not saying that, you know, I, I don't know what was there, but we do know a firearm that definitely was there is not in the picture. 
Yeah, what's the feeling right now in the town of Coots? I know you've kind of been meeting with them a lot this week. Uh, are people feeling let down, like they don't have an outlet to display what they're feeling anymore? Or are people relieved that it's gone? Uh, what's the feeling there? Well, I imagine, you know, like, like any event, there's a certain amount of excitement, um, whether you're for or against it, but eventually it does wear off. So, you know, I, I do believe there would be relief to see us go. I do think we were very accommodating with traffic um, when we left. We literally had a grocery store full of food downstairs. We gave that out to the community. Uh, we helped the community, you know, when, when we had a lot of people down, down at Coots and, for example, the two snowfalls we had, we sent guys out shoveling the sidewalks for elderly. You know, every complaint that was made aware, that we were made aware of, we, we addressed. Um, does that mean we had the full support of the community? We, we didn't, we don't know that, but we did have a lot of people reach out uh, that were in, in support of what we were doing and definitely worked with us. So. Okay. Great. Uh, did people leave because they were scared uh, of what police might do? Um, were they afraid of other criminals who have maybe infiltrated their group? Uh, what exactly happened? Can you tell us kind of what happened last Sunday night and last Monday? Uh, we're hearing from RCMP that they took in excavators and somehow disabled these tractors and trucks that were on the highway. Uh, it's hard to kind of understand unless you were there. What did you see happen? Yeah, so I'll quickly start with uh, Saturday. Saturday, I was uh, pretty occupied. I was in meetings with um, a couple of MLAs and MPs in Milk River. Now, I was aware of events on the ground um, in, in general. You know, things were run by me. I wasn't made aware of the details of every, every aspect. It's, it's too much. So I knew there was excavators being brought in. Um, the negotiators who I was in touch with daily, multiple times a day, reached out to me when these excavators were brought down uh, within sight of the highway and the RCMP um, definitely overreacted. And as a response, I worked with them and said, let's move these excavators back to um, out of sight of the highway. A couple hours later, um, seven, eight o'clock Saturday night, uh, we were informed that that still was not good enough and that the decision was made from the top. Uh, when I say the top, it could have been the commissioner, you know, it, it, higher, higher ups. I wasn't made aware of names or, or positions uh, that these excavators would be disabled. Um, even though we did pull back the excavators, they, they were privately owned on private property. Um, we did inform them that that was obviously not legal and they said, uh, and I have proof of this, they said, we'll deal with these consequences later. Uh, there is currently a civil suit being filed against the RCMP for this. This is a separate, this is a bit separate of the whole Coots rally. Um, going into Sunday, Sunday was, you know, Saturday, Sunday was a weekend. A lot of people coming and going pretty quiet, right? The RCMP uh, was doing a, uh, was, was very heavily involved in the Milk River block blockade, just from an enforcement safety aspect. I think Coots, um it was real quiet you know there was barely any rcmp on the ground a sunday night we made we fired up all the tractors so if you're aware of the blockade there's a lot of farm implements being used to blockade the highway we fired them all up right you know batteries can drain so we thought hey it's been a couple days been a bit colder let's fire them all up let them run for five ten minutes turn the lights on and um there's a lot of people there right and it's it's probably a bit of a show as well uh, unfortunately, two individuals did start driving one tractor and one, one truck. And there was, if you look at the videos, the RCMP definitely um, uh, overreacted as to what it was these individuals were driving around. And there was a um, RCMP vehicle that, um, that happened to be on the highway and it shows, it, 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 it the video shows that they were close together, but as a response to that altercation, you know, it, it, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't anything serious, but um, as a response to that, the, um, the SWAT team rolled in. Now we actually interrupted their operation because they had a warrant for what happened after 
um, the event Sunday night at the saloon for this residence in Coots. And their warrant was for um, 10 o'clock till 11.59. And we, at, at, I think 9.30, we happened to be doing this and we interrupted their operation and they came in heavy at the saloon. Um, while they were there, things were very tense for a while, but de-escalated quite rapidly because we were, we were, there was, we had no intentions. It was, it was a, it was a complete misunderstanding, but while they were there, they did make two arrests, um, of, and, and two of those individuals are still held in custody. Um, and then shortly after things de-escalated, you know, I, I dealt with the RCMP, I dealt with <clears throat> SWAT an hour after they left, they executed their warrant at this residence in Coots. And just to go on record, this residence has nothing to do, had nothing to do with the rally. I do know this individual was very helpful um, in the two weeks that we were there. And I just feel again that just a harmless person, wrong place, wrong time. I'm sure, I'm sure there's so much to it. So this would be the incident that RCMP was saying that a tractor and a truck were driving towards them and he had to swerve out of the way. That's the incident that you're referring to now. This, this truck and trailer were harmlessly driving around um, and this RCMP vehicle did pull in front and these guys did stop. Um, was, was there, you know, is it intimidating when you got a big four wheel drive tractor and you, you may have never seen one in your life? Yes, completely. But to say that the truck and the tractor assaulted that police vehicle, if you look at the videos and if you were on the ground, you will know that that is, that is not the case. Wow. So you're saying there's just a lot of misinformation, lost, a lot of misunderstanding going around the, the whole coots thing. 100%. Yeah. What's your main, what is your main message to people, to the community, to our viewers? Well, I, I think the message we rolled in with was we were looking for an end to all mandates and all emergency measures. We left without that, um, without all of that being put in place. On a provincial level, we've definitely seen a change of course. We, and the, we, we're not looking for recognition. We understand they could never recognize what we did there, but we do see Kenny's government speeding things up. And even in the last four or five days, his tone has changed. He's been on the offensive with the ATA. He's been on the offensive uh, with other governments who are still putting mandates in place or have strict mandates. Um, the, the, the reality of it is that it's, it's, we need to remember that it's his government that did put these mandates in place, even though now he's looking to lift them and somehow be the, be, be the hero or, you know, be, you know, I guess he's got a leadership review coming up, right? He, he, he's, he's, he's fighting that fight and he's looking for support that, that way as well. Um, as, as to the message, this is about, this is bigger than, than, than COVID. This is about governments listening to their constituents. You see it, federally, provincially, um, you know, we have a say every four years or if it's a minority government every two years, possibly sooner, but we don't really have a say. If you look at what's happened with COVID, many things have been put in place, many rules, many mandates, many, not necessarily laws, but where, where do the people have, where do the people get to have their say? You know, every couple of years we have an election and, and, and we get to decide between one or the other, but we need there's a serious disconnect between the grassroots and the people in power and do i have all the answers as to what better system looks like well i, I think it goes back to here's one example so in the united states the judges are elected right they, they they they're held accountable every every four years here we have judges that are appointed for life if you if you if you know the difference between the two, you can understand real quickly how there can be a real disconnect um, between the two systems, right? So it comes back to people people representing, or sorry, the, the powers to be representing the people. Um, and you know, there's 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 two sides to everything, but I do feel that this movement, um, not not our movement, but I believe there is a movement. I believe there's a worldwide movement, uh, countrywide that people are getting involved people who have stood to the, on the sidelines and and said this doesn't affect me or i, I don't <clears throat> i don't really care they're they're getting involved they want to have their say they want to be heard 
Marco, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing. Thanks for having me.